Hello and welcome to round two with Red Green Ponza, where we are on the play again. Very lucky. So looking at our hand, straightforward. We basically just have to keep any turn two Blood Moon hand. And this game we're going to fetch Forest and play Birds of Paradise. And the reason for that is that we want to get both of our forests onto the battlefield to guarantee mana even if our birds dies. But we also want to cast Moon on too, so this is pretty straightforward. And our opponent does about the worst thing for a turn 2 Blood Moon hand, which is cast Scred. Which means that all their lands are mountains anyways, and we're just going to lose. So, and by that I mean we're just going to not have a Blood Moon. But the rest of our hand is nothing but Blood Moon. Opponent plays a Mind Stone. Great. Anti-land destruction card. And we're going to fetch a dual land out of our deck. And uh, part of that's... Uh, we want the second red through an opposing Blood Moon as well. Well, you just want a second red in general. But we want it also through our Arbor Elf dying. So we don't pay life. And we jam for one. Nice chip shot. Our opponent not playing a... Uh, Koth here is really nice, um, and it, they look like they're trying to uh, give us mana issues, but it's not really going to happen. And we really just don't have a lot to do besides playing a uh, little 1-1, one -one, which is pretty sad. And Batter Skull kind of trumps that. Batter Skull is quite good. And we just draw more 1-1s. One uh, also unfortunate that we can't bonfire away a Batter Skull. I'm fine taking the first hit because if I uh, draw an Empyrean, I would like to cast it. I'd also like to be able to cast a Bonfire for four um, because that will eventually kill a Koth. Kind of fire the Stone Rain. It doesn't really matter under Blood Moon because the only land that my opponent has that isn't a mountain is Trying Sheets. And destroying the land just hampers options. Take another hit. Um, it's worth noting, thinking ahead, that uh, 6 life is okay, but 2 life is not very safe. So I'm going to start chump blocking then. Uh, and this does give us the ability to cast Bonfire for 4. That's what that last Birds is doing. Our opponent is so non-land destroyed that they're able to cycle Mind Stone. And then we lose all of our cards. And... Still have nothing. And then we get hit in the face with a dragon. Uh, yeah, so... The Blood Moon Mirror is... Uh, not usually decided by the Blood Moons. Unshockingly. Okay, sideboarding. So, this was my post-board config. So, if you look at this, I took out... Ah, this is one too many cards real fast. Let me resolve that. There we go. Forgot that. So, I ended up taking out... Uh, or let's talk about what I brought in. I brought in all the threats because I want to be attacking, and I specifically want to attack a Koth if it resolves. I brought in Dismember uh, to deal with Storm Breath Dragon. I brought in two Ancient Grudges for my opponent's Batter Skulls, Mind Stones, various effects. Um, and then we went to one Ooze Out, not a great card against them, just kind of a random dork. Uh, two Bonfires. I wanted a couple to be able to punch through on a Koth, especially with an Arbor Elf aided attack, um, but I didn't want a ton. And I brought out the Blood Moons because, come on. Then I brought out an Acid Moss. Uh, the logic was I didn't want these slower uh, land destruction spells to kind of clunk up my hand, but that might have been wrong. Um, I think it's very possible I should have just taken out both uses. Okay, so game two where we are on the play. This hand is not the greatest, but I do like the redundant uh, mana acceleration and... The Arbor Elf just kind of do whatever we draw off the top really quick. And Finks is a reasonable threat to have if you're going to be threat light. So I kept this. Um, worth noting a little bit in advance. Uh, that you do want to put your Utopia Sprawls on basics against Blood Moon. So we play our Finks. I actually did this wrong. I should have played um, this Sprawl on green so I could cast the other Sprawl on the other forest here when I untap, but I just wasted a mana. So I lose my elf to jet, but I do get to madcap 
And here I get to get another basic forest and actually just sprawl again. So I have two red sprawls. So I have red mana, uh, double red through whatever. And then I get to go madcap, make an Empyrean, attack for three. My opponent's play is a mere Mindstone. Another great draw, Madcap Experiment. I get the jam, put my opponent to six. And I'm basically 100% sure there's no Shadow Storm incoming. So I re up on Madcap. And guess what? My opponent concedes to my, you know, 19 power of creatures they can't kill. Shocking. So game three, we are on the draw. And this is an interesting first hand to kind of talk about. I say first hand because I did mulligan. So this hand, um, I felt like it didn't... I think in retrospect, I wanted to keep but it felt like it really just didn't do anything. Um, especially if the elf gets blown up. This felt like a hand that could very easily just get like early cothed. But I think I might have been wrong. Because I think in order for my opponent to cough under the acid moss. Um, they are going to need to actually spend a turn killing creature. Instead of casting an accelerant. Because they're not playing uh, Simeon Spirit Guide. If they're playing the Grand Prix winning list. Also uh, the... Just the payoff if I just hit on the turn two acid moss is so high. Um, but I mulliganed. Especially in the face of a mulligan. This hand looked fine. It's not great, but it'll play a fair game pretty well. And we're going to keep another land on top of our library with the scry. Our opponent's mold to five. We play a turn one sprawl. Uh, out for black. The, the logic there is I don't feel like I'm going to need a second. Like I have a guaranteed red source. I don't think I'm going to need the extra red by the time I tighten. I'd rather actually just have the black source on the battlefield in case I have to kill a uh, Stormbreath Dragon. We play our fetch land. Uh, just get our fetches done before Blood Moon hits if it does. Though it's unlikely they have it at post board against my deck. And we get Molten Rain, which is pretty bad. So we fetch our duel. Draw Madcap, which is a great place to end up getting. Opponent resolves a Koth, which is going to kill us very fast if we don't get lucky. I could dismember a land, but all that really does is just destroy a land. I'd rather save the dismember to actually kill a threat. Player Arbor Elf, it gets scredded, but we can still draw a land. Except for the part where we get Molten Rained again. Our opponent attacks us for four, and now is a Koth looking at Embleming, which is basically game over if you have not ever been Koth Emblemed. I have won one game lifetime against Koth Emblem, and it involved having equipped Batterskull to Batterskull the turn before, and getting that chump blocked. Um, or no, I had stuck a Batterskull, and then I stuck a second Batterskull the turn it was going to Emblem, and then I ended up Batterskull and Batterskull. Don't ask. Batterskull and Batterskull is enough to beat a Koth Emblem, but that's about it. And by that I mean the germ token. Um... Yeah, there's nothing I can really draw here to break that. I play the birds, but my opponent emblems, and I'm actually just dead to the burn in two. This did not feel like another good matchup because, again, our land destruction's not that optimal. My opponent has ways to get out from under the land destruction, especially with Mindstone. And Blood Moon being bad is not great. Though our opponent does have issues with Madcap Experiment and 8-8s. Uh, eight so that may have been a, a f the free win that I needed. I think keeping that first-hand game three would have been better. Um, but I did not like, you know, just seeing the Blood Moon hand just get bricked felt really, really bad. 